The focus of this video is hydatid cyst of the liver. It is one of the cystic conditions afflicting the liver, common in sheep rearing parts of the world. We will learn about tapeworm, which is the culprit, what symptoms it causes in the liver, its diagnosis and treatment. The life cycle of the tapeworm involves a definitive host, which is a carnivore, commonly the dogs. The adult tapeworm resides in the intestine where it produces eggs and these eggs are taken up by the intermediate host commonly the sheep the humans are accidental intermediate hosts where the eggs may be ingested because of proximity to the dogs in these communities these eggs then pass into the small bowel where they hatch and break through the bowel wall enter the bloodstream and then end up in far off organs commonly the liver a little less commonly in the lungs and occasionally in other parts such as the brain the spleen even the bone and skin once a cyst forms within the liver it has a thick wall with several layers outlined over here the cyst contains fluid as all cysts do this is called a hydatid fluid and it is very allergenic and may cause a severe anaphylactic reaction that is an allergic reaction within the host if it is released from within the cyst and inside the cyst may be hundreds, sometimes thousands of daughter cysts, which are highly infective. Typically, the life cycle of the cyst itself has several features, including growth, progression, and at times it may become calcified and die off. The symptoms of liver cysts are dependent upon the size of the cyst and its location. There may be a very long lag period of several decades before symptoms appear. If the cyst attains a large enough size, then it will cause pain in the right upper part of the abdomen, particularly worse on bending or straining. The daughter cysts may escape into the bile tube as shown over here and cause colicky pain, infection of the bile called cholangitis or even pancreatitis. A large enough cyst may compress the blood vessels such as parts of the portal vein or the vein itself causing high pressure within the vein called portal hypertension it may compress the inferior vena cava the main vein that takes blood back to the heart or it may compress on the veins which drain the liver causing a condition called bud chiari syndrome but rarely the cysts may rupture into the abdomen which is a dangerous condition releasing all of the daughter cysts and causing a severe allergic reaction or anaphylaxis which can be fatal the cysts are also prone to infection and less commonly bleeding the diagnosis of this condition rests on a high index of suspicion the most common modality are the scans and ultrasound has been found to be extremely useful in diagnosing as well as evaluating the cyst for treatment picture of an ultrasound scan a hydatid cyst is outlined along with a layer that produces the daughter cysts other modalities such as a ct and mri scan may add further detail and confirm the diagnosis blood tests are dependent upon circulating antibodies and there are various serological tests available depending upon the stage of the disease and active infestation is usually associated with a positive blood test for hydatid disease rarely the diagnosis may be in doubt and a biopsy may settle the question however it has to be remembered that any rupture of the cyst or escape of the fluid is associated with significant complications such as spread of the disease or significant anaphylaxis allergic reaction wherever an, a biopsy is being attempted these features have to be kept in mind the treatment of the hydatid cyst is dependent upon the stage of the disease meaning whether the disease is active on the size of the cyst within the liver and its location within the liver almost all patients who are being actively treated will require medical treatment which kill off the parasites and the daughter cysts the primary agent is a drug called albendazole it has a cousin called mebendazole and sometimes it is combined with another drug called praziquantel there are specified duration of medical treatment that the patients must undergo and this may be the only treatment required for a proportion of the patients in others this treatment will precede further interventional treatments for a liver hydatid cyst in terms of interventional treatment where the liver is treated directly this can be done radiologically through a procedure called pair for cysts that are five centimeters or smaller in size pair stands for radiologically guided puncture of the cyst aspiration of the cyst con contents 
instilling the cyst with fluid that kills off the daughter cysts that are still living within the hydatid and then re-aspirating or taking out all of the fluid from the cyst. This is a very effective method of treating cysts that are accessible to radiological treatment. Small cysts that are calcified and burnt out without any active disease do not require this treatment. Equally, the smaller cysts, the medical treatment may be enough to treat these. Surgical treatment is required for cysts that are usually long, larger than 5 centimeters, and the principles are the same. It is very important that whatever technique is used, that any spillage is prevented and there must be preparations in place to face a severe allergic reaction if there is accidental spillage. Almost all patients are pre-treated with medical treatment to reduce the risk of live daughter's cysts being released. Now surgical treatment may be open or more com commonly through the minim minimally invasive such as the laparoscopic route where cyst walls are opened, the spillage is contained, they're aspirated, fluid is instilled that kills off the daughter cysts and any communication with the bowel tube is examined for and closed. This is one of the World Health Organization has produced an extremely useful classification of treatment of liver hydatid cysts. It stages them from CE1 to CE5 dependent upon the appearance on ultrasound scans, whether or not the disease is active, the size of the cyst, and then it offers a preferred treatment for these various stages as well as the alternate treatment. This should serve as a useful basis for clinicians treating such patients. This, cul this culminates a brief overview of the liver hydatid cyst. If you have any comments, please do share.